Hi, today I'm talking about one way that anxiety and post-traumatic stress cripple relationships. And so that's what we're going to be diving into today. I'm Rachel McLeod. I'm a mental therapist, a coach, and a therapist mentor. And so, and I help people, I specialize in helping people do the brain work for resolving symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress. The brain has a beautiful process for this, and it really can get stuck and not actually do its job. And so we keep having symptoms, they pile up, they start taking over our life, and we really want to get this process moving and functioning really, really, really well. And that's what I specialize in doing. And so today, uh, that leads me straight into this topic because this, the brain not doing its work is really how our relationships can be crippled by anxiety or depression, or not depression, well, depression as well. But um, but I'm going to talk today about um, anxiety and post-traumatic stress. And you might hear my dogs in the background. They need bark at all the people I'm at in my home office. Um, so, okay. So this is the one way that um, anxiety and post-traumatic stress can cripple relationships. And I want to talk to you about how, what brains do here. I have this all mapped up in my head and now my brain wants to go in three more directions. Um, I, let me see. Um, oh, I want to say so many things. <laughs> okay. Breathing. <sighs> okay. I think I'm just going to tell you what it is and then we'll go into why. So, because we post traumatic stress can interrupt our brain's process for finding solutions many of us and all of us where our anxiety and post traumatic stress are showing up will be blocked from creating solutions uh, and will be blocked from therefore implementing solutions not reactions solutions and this takes a huge toll on relationships because if you can't make solutions then you don't get to help, you don't get to be part of the teamwork. And what happens is that um, people can, this is what's, this is a healthy process. This is a, what healthy brains are doing. And this is what I'm looking for when I'm working with people. Is their brain doing this? If it's not, we, I'm going to show you where the brain will go offline and, um, and you'll be stuck at, if you can't do this process, you'll be stuck as just a whiner, a complainer, and a problem solver, a problem identifier, and a criticizer. And that cripples your relationships, all of them, every one of them, 100% of the time, that that pattern right there. If your brain is doing the full process, you will be a solution maker. Um, people will be drawn to you. You will be able to create deep connections and, and, um, and safety and security in your relationships. You will be seen as a resource um, within your relationships. Um, and if you can do this and your partner cannot, you will become the fixer in the relationship. Your partner will become the whiner, the complainer, the problem solver, the criticizer to activate the problem solver because their own problem solver doesn't work. And now um, the other partner is um, doing all the solutioning because they can. Sometimes um, when we have extensive anxiety or um, trauma disorders, um, it will be, we will, this will disable us and impair us in every area of our life. We are, our brain function is just not moving well enough to really create solutions. And so we'll find ourselves whining, complaining, pity partying. None of these things are wrong. They just tell us where you're at in the brain process here. Cause it's a, it, all of this stuff is a good process. It's okay. It's it, brains it, are it, whining, complaining, um, uh, and pity partying are all the brain trying to do move emotion and organize itself. So I'm going to talk about that process in just a second. So, but that's not where you want to get stuck. And the better your brain is at using those, those processes to, um, to create, um, to, to really get, to keep go the process going and really get to solutions, the faster and faster it will be. So it's almost like you don't even do those processes because they're electrical fast. Your brain is so skilled at those that you just, nobody, nobody would ever call you a whiner, complainer, criticizer, because that process moves so well within you, right? And you have a beautiful subconscious program 
programming for that phase. Now, none of us are perfect on this one. There will be some things that throw our brain out. Um, and, and so that's what some of the other relationships look like. Sometimes we're with people and in this area, I'm really good at problem solving. And in this area, I shut down and I can't. So my partner picks up this one. and But over here, my partner shuts down over here. And now we've got um, some what we're sharing the load in the other state with somebody with, an, with such a big um, all-encompassing disorder. Um, that partner is carrying a load and it cripples the relationship because it drains out that other partner. Both partners are actually being drained because being stuck in whining and complaining, the brain function of that is exhausting and it's debilitating. And so this cripples relationships and eventually they tear each other apart, drain out, and they don't get help They to stop these processes. They will need to, their brain will naturally want to get away from pain and depleting processes. And so that's not good on the future of the relationship. And so, um, so uh, we want to see, we want to see some things. Now, let me show you um, a healthy process, what we want your brain to be doing, uh, because that is, that's how this, the crippling is. And let's go through the process and then how to get through this process. Okay. First, um, when we have a problem, when there's something going on, we will start sensing the problem. Um, so that's going to start. And this is always going to be here. We want this. We want your system to sense problems, right? If your sink gets clogged, oh, please sense it. Um, please don't not sense it because you're going to have a problem if you don't sense it. And that's not healthy brain function. Oh, I'm just ignoring. I don't see any problems. No, um, that's actually a place where we actually work quite a bit. But that's not what I'm talking about in this video. So, um, so, and there's a really big, there's a really beautiful brain process to take down denial and to start being able to see problems that are occurring. And um, there's a reason why we do that. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. It's all the nerd space I'm giving myself in that moment. Okay, so we start sensing there's a problem. Then the emotions that we have start moving through our bodies to give us reports about the specifics of the problems. That's what emotions are for. They are reporters. They are the reporters of what's going on outside and inside of us. And we need that information. Uh, that information is designed to go up through the brainstem and um, throughout all the body, up the brainstem and into this beautiful whole brain, all the factories in the upper parts of the brain, past the survival system. That's where they will be sorted, analyzed, um, uh, processed the information. Uh, that's where things will be understood and insight is made and clarity. And the your upper parts of the brain are trying to, are taking the information from the emotions and the senses <laughs> and they're um, they're translating them. They're very good at this. Um, so you don't actually need to know what your emotions are. They do, but it's really helpful to know your what your emotions are. But um, so then uh, that's where your brain mixes all of that information from the emotions and the senses into your morals, your values, um, your uh, understanding multiple perspectives. Um, uh, creating a more accurate understanding and behaviors, right? This is where the brain is like, oh, we've had this wrong. Um, now that we've got this new report, uh, this shouldn't go there. We need to rewire. This is where rewiring takes place. And it's because the emotions got to the reports carried within the emotions got to all the parts of the brain. So they're automatically going and rewiring. Um, and there, and that rewiring is making is making you the effect of that more accurate with the situation. The more accurate you are, the more accurate your solutions will be, and the more uh, the better your solutions will be. And so you will find more creative, effective, accurate ways of fight of solving problems. Then we go through um, with all the information processing. Brains like to do this part of the process way too early. Okay, that's what I'm just going to say. They uh, Now it's time for solution gathering. Your prefrontal cortex is going to do that at the beginning of the process all the way through. Now, if it starts early, you're not going to get very good solutions because it really hasn't read all the reports, right? But when we've got anxiety, depression, traumatic stress, you're going to notice that happening early. And you really don't want to go with that because it's not very fabulous. Okay. Now, um, but at the, at the, as the stuff gets more processed, your solutions are going to be really, really wonderful. If you have a healthy process of this and you've practiced this enough, this process is going lightning speed. You probably don't even notice it. You couldn't even break it down. For those of us like myself that have had to build this thing from scratch, there are spots along the destination <laughs> and you got to really pull the brain. Come on, you can do more. Um, so, uh, 
uh, and then solution generation, um, solution selection, solution implementation, and solution reevaluation. We should see all of those things going on. Um, they can be very fast. Faster, that means your process is moving smoother. It's had more practice. Now, when your partner, when you come together as partners in relationships, whether it's with your children or your romantic relationship or business or boss or whoever you're with in a relationship and you can make it through all those steps and now you're having high level conversations about solutions and perspectives and um, you're being very inclusive and you're really in you're 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 just running on all cylinders. You're going to implement great solutions. Both you're going to say, that sounds great. Let's rock. And you're going to go implement them, right? That doesn't mean there's not some rocky stuff in there, right? Because when sometimes when we're going in perspective gathering, we're actually starting the emotion process all up again. We got to get all that processed. So, um, but that's, that's what we want to see. Um, that makes teamwork. That makes high fives. This makes connection. This makes safety. This makes, ha. Ah, I'm winning, right? That's what, that's how that's made. Okay. Um, now, because this is where anxiety and post-traumatic stress will get us right here. When the emotions and senses start moving through the, the body and go up this the brainstem, they go to the survival system. Uh, because we're reporting, the emotions are actually reporting on problems. That means that there's distress in the reports. And so the survival system can really is reactive to that distress. And so it will really shut down the process and all the stuff has to go back to the system. So the report never makes it to the top of the brain. Right. OK, so because the report never gets to the top, we don't get to move past the other into the other higher level brain states. We don't get morals. We don't get values. We don't get multiple perspectives. We just have the sense that something's wrong. And so this is where we stay in. The body keeps wanting to complete the report. Right. So it wants to keep repeating, keep. And so it's just distress in there. But with the other piece that's going on, when the survival system says, no, you shall not pa pass, it shifts your entire system into fight, flight, freeze, faint, or fawn. And that's where you get your anxiety, your 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 um, your racing thoughts, your irritability, um, your fight mode, um, all the things that we're doing in relationships because we have a problem. And actually our, our process for creating solutions is impaired. And it's impaired early on. And so we just have these emotions and they start exploding and we're, we're, we're behaving out our emotions. We're acting out our emotions. We're relating out our emotions and not in the best. And they haven't even made it to the highest reasoning parts of the brain. They're only being utilized by the survival system, which doesn't care about anybody else. That's not its design. It only cares about keeping you alive. So now you're defensive and you're shutting down and you're freezing and you can't come to the table for solutions. And your partner is like, hey, I thought we were partners here. Hey, why don't we just sit down and have an adult like conversation? Hey, um, why, why are you being like this? Why are you attacking everybody? Why? 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 And it's just a brain state that occurs. And it's the, that 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 partner that's that's being defensive or shut down is actually that that their system is not utilizing those emotions well. And so it's causing a crash in the system. It's causing survival mode and it's not good. And if we if this happens over and over again, we learn to stay away from them in there. We say, OK, well, we're not going to even talk to them about this issue because it goes bad every time. And so now uh, we're we're solving problems alone. Now there's separation in the relationship. There's bitterness beginning. Um, one is like, please help me. And I'm not trying to do that. And the other one is like, I know. And But we have solutions and I can't talk to you about them. I have to walk on eggshells. And this is what happens with our children, our relationships, our bosses, our partners, our employees, and the, the problem solving process gets worse and worse and more inhibited and impaired. And so really when we're, we're talking about moving emotions and getting your body really good at processing the reports, emotions are sending them the negative ones. Those negative ones have the hardest time making it through your process, your brain's process, because that survival system is so reactive to them, especially if you've got a history of complex PTSD, childhood and developmental trauma. That means your system really hasn't had a lot of practice with this. And it's also has a lot of painful past unresolved materials that your system System has never had the support to fully process. And so, uh, so really, and this is how our system, our mind-body system reorganizes and utilizes our emotional intelligence. It's, it's coming up through the emotions to all these reports, but if it gets blocked out, we can't even use our emotional intelligence. 
And this impairs our relationships ir irreparably. This impairs our ability to do so many things and makes our life worse and worse. And so just getting this process, that survival system, allowing all of the emotional reports up into the higher parts of the brain opens our life, opens our relationships and instantly and so quickly. And that part of the brain, it's not like our thinking center. It's not a talking center. It's not a reasoning center. It's not a logic center. It does not care. But it is listening to the body and if we can use the body we can talk to that part of the brain in its own language and say hey why don't you just let this stuff through you're safe and it listens instantly and healing happens right away this is actually part of our design we've lost it because of culture and society and we're so advanced right and we are advanced but we have lost a lot of our advancements with emotions because we we went up to the prefrontal cortex and we we let go of that part of the brain so there's a new way of working with that part of the brain. I invite you to use it. I want to invite you to try three of my favorite interventions for this, and um, I teach them for free. I use these with all of my coaching clients, all of my therapy clients. Um, they work very fast to influence that part of the brain to allow healing to happen. And so I've included the link to that free program in the description part of this program to this this thing and um, so you can just click on there enroll try out my interventions and try working with your brain in this specific way and see what happens people are telling me I'm seeing a shift I'm not as anxious I'm not having this panic attack yeah because we're actually working with the brain in its design and it's opening up to do its most best most amazing functions for us so I want you to have that and um, I invite you to try that out with me. If that's something that, if you try these interventions, like, oh my goodness, I think Rachel's on to something. Yes, Rachel is. Hello. Um, <laughs> so if you want to try that, if you if that works, if you're finding that works, I have a program to show you the next step, how to direct your brain to do the healing work you want it to do. And that it's already trying to do, but it's hard to get it all done at one time. And so there's a, I've developed a process to really, we're, today we're doing this brain and then, you know, and on and on a whole roadmap. So that's also available on my website. And if you want me to walk you through this process personally, um, I have coaching programs for that as well. So that's also on my website. Thank you for joining me. I'm gonna jump off, take care. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> Two times, bye.